Tonight is Apple's iWatch set for an autumn reveal. The FCC comes down hard on cell phone jammers. And what exactly is T-Mobile thinking? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 112 for Thursday, June 19th, 2014. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Reuters is reporting Taiwan-based Quanta Computer will start mass production of Apple's smartwatch next month, according to an unnamed source. They're always unnamed, aren't they? If true... It would be a win for Quanta, who's been working with Apple, but previously on parts for laptops and iPads. Those are two product lines, which are definitely in decline. Reuters also reports the iWatch commercial launch could come as early as October. The watch face would measure 2.5 inches on the diagonal, be slightly rectangular, and will feature a touch interface and wireless charging capabilities. A source says the watch is currently in trial production at Quanta, which will be the main manufacturer and will account for at least 70% of final assembly. Okay, so let's just assume that's true. And talking about wearables, mobile analytics company Flurry notes that less than halfway through the year of 2014, the growth in health and fitness app usage has been pretty impressive. In fact, the company studied the usage of over 6,800 iPhone and iPad apps that are listed in the health and fitness category on Flurry's platform and saw a 62% increase in usage of health and fitness apps over the past six months. Now, this compares to a 33% increase in usage measured in sessions for just the mobile app industry in general. Flurry calls users who spent more than three times the average amount of time in health and fitness apps fitness fanatics, of which 62% are females and 38% males. That compares to 48% females and 52% males for average mobile consumption. So I guess hurry up with the watches, everybody, because the ladies are waiting. The Federal Communications Commission is fining a Chinese electronics maker, CTS Technology Company Limited of Shenzhen, China, almost $35 million for selling devices that can jam cell phone signals, which is a record amount. The commission says that the company marketed 285 models of jamming devices to U.S. consumers for more than two years. FCC staff bought 10 of the devices while undercover to confirm that they were indeed shipped to the U.S. and are currently looking for people who bought them. An FCC official says the fine is particularly high because the company's advertising misleadingly claimed that the devices had been approved by the FCC, which they were not. The commission is taxed with keeping, tasked with keeping the airwaves clear for licensed people to use the licenses and has warned that jammers could block communications among police and fire departments in an emergency situation or prevent people from using their phones to call 911. Google has just acquired Alpental Technologies, a Seattle area startup that's been operating in stealth mode. In fact, not much is known about the company, but last year, an SEC filing by the company indicated it had raised $850,000 in startup financing and was led by former Clearwire technologists who oversaw at Clearwire corporate research, systems engineering, intellectual property, and wireless communications technologies that helped to lower the cost per gigabyte of that company's broadband network. GeekWire reports that the Alpental team was developing technologies possibly related to 5G, the next generation wireless network, and that former Atheros communications CEO Craig Barrett, who is now a senior vice president at Google, led the acquisition faster data for everybody uh, in a moment uh if it was if it was down for you hopefully it's not down anymore i'll tell you about a big old outage that hit the internet this morning but first let's welcome david spark founder of spark media solutions he is joining us again hello david welcome back to tn2 it's great to be back well it's great Thanks, to have Sarah. you it's always good to have you you're you Thank know you. you're you're part of the old guard uh, around these parts all right so let's talk about t-mobile's event last night these, these night events are kind of becoming a thing it seems like and i, I don't it's, know everybody it's hipper at night and people are usually drinking so there I, you go i guess they so can, right they can take the news exactly so they announced a few kind of interesting things let's start with the music side it was uh the music freedom program is what t-mobile was calling this that will exempt certain music streaming services from counting against your monthly data limit. Um, and that sounds fine and good. And 
the company named Pandora, Rhapsody, iHeartRadio, iTunes Radio, Slacker, and Spotify didn't say those would be the only partners, but did right. call them out specifically. What do you think about this? Does it does is this paid prioritization? Well, that's the the number one complaint that people have been saying is that uh, the you know on the on the face of it, it's like oh great, so I'm getting something free, I'm getting something for nothing, you know, because it's not going to go against my data usage. But when you go down just a hair of a level deeper, not that much, you realize, oh, wait a second, uh, this is a big net neutrality issue because we're putting priority over, you know, for certain services here. And, uh, every, you know, the main complaint is this is a very slippery slope uh, for that. I should also know that they, they while um, T-Mobile does offer an unlimited data service, uh, it gets throttled after you use 4G down to a... 2G, excuse me, if, yeah, if it gets throttled at four gigabytes after, and they get brought down to a 2G service. Mm -hmm. A little confusing there. Okay. So um, that doesn't seem like the, the best move by the company to, to do something like that because people who are using four gigabytes are kind of your best customers as well. Um, but, I, you know, on the face of it, sounds great. And I think he was going for like a uh, a Steve Jobs move here. Because if you remember Steve Jobs, when he first released the uh, the iPod, he said a thousand uh, songs in your pocket. Well, he's saying, you know, music should be unlimited. There should be no limits on music. I think that was the line. There should be no limits on music. And he's hoping that that's going to be repeated over and over again, like a thousand songs in your pocket. And, you know, that's what I'm assuming. But uh, I think he was kind of going for a grand play there. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're a Spotify customer, this sounds great on the surface. Yes. Uh, but sure, you know, but, but exactly. I mean, if T-Mobile can do this uh, with streaming services and customers are happy, how long before... Uh, there's there's prioritization for uh, competitors, of course. Deutsche Telekom, of course, is 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 the parent company of T-Mobile. Andrew Sherrod, uh, who works at T-Mobile, had an interesting thing to say. Uh, he he was quoted as saying, "Our position on net neutrality, our regulatory position, is that we don't think this industry needs to be regulated with such a heavy hand." Do you think he's talking mobile, or just the internet in general? Oh, I mean, th th aren't they kind of one and the same right I guess now? At this but, point, yeah. But you know, the whole thing also with mobile is <sighs> the whole mobile market is about confusing customers. I mean, there is no other industry where the purchase of a product requires you to stay locked to the service for two years. I mean, that's quite unusual. And um, and and customers are paying depending on how low to how high. You're looking at between fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars over two years that you're spending well let's talk a little bit more about this whole iphone initiative t-mobile right. says you could have a free iphone it's a it's a it's a trial run of its service it's called t-mobile test drive so if you're an interested person they'll get they'll give you an iphone 5s loaner for seven days with unlimited data basically to to check out the service to make sure it's fast enough i guess Mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh, again, these are, you know, it's so funny that they really sell themselves as the quote uncarrier, but I think they're just doing the same thing that everybody else is doing. Uh, and again, there's attempts that they're trying to make, you know, being, you know, carrier number four in the marketplace. Uh, also, what is so on and hip about it? I mean, how different is get a phone for seven days and if you don't like it, you can return it to any store. Any different than a late night infomercial saying, you know, 30 days or your money back. You know, we all know that people don't ask for their money back. So chances are very high that people take them up on this. They're going to keep the phone. It's kind of like, you know, here, you know, take the puppy home for seven days and if you don't want the puppy, return it to us. People are going to keep the puppy. They're going to keep the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, T-Mobile is also the number four wireless carrier, so it's in an interesting position where, and John Legere, the CEO, is he's kind of known as, I, I don't know if you'd call him wild and crazy. I know he got kicked out of a party at CES earlier this year, but I think he, he wants to be known as somebody who's bucking the trend and doing things differently. But I guess when you're in that position, do you, do you really have much other choice? I mean, you, you bring up an excellent points there. I mean, they, they have to differentiate their brand. I mean, the other three carriers are as sort of as standard looking as you possibly can get. And so they have definitely a hipness to their brand overall in their marketing and their advertising. Uh, so, I mean, if, you know, it's 
you know, there's a classic sales technique is like if, if the product can't do the job, well, just try to market your way out of it. And I, I kind of get that sense here is like he he's claiming that his product and his service, you know, the service of T-Mobile is great. But if it really isn't and if they're really not getting customers to join in, they have to come up with marketing tricks to try to get people to join, to try out their product. And, you know, these are just marketing tricks. And these will be forgotten about very, very soon. Um, but again, people are still confused by the whole pricing scheme and the data scheme and how much data I do and don't get. It's, it's a tough, tough for the average consumer to understand. David Spark is the founder of Spark Media Solutions. Thanks for joining us, David. Thank and, you, Sarah. And let people know where they can keep up with all the stuff that you do. SparkMediaSolutions.com. That's oh. one really easy way. <laughs> That's it. That's a good one. Thanks, David. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Finally, you might love it. You might hate it. But you probably notice when it's not there, right? Facebook suffered a major international outage earlier today. It didn't last very long. I think it was technically about 30 minutes. But the site was completely unavailable in multiple regions around the world. Seems to be up and running now. I got a couple funny errors surfing myself, but it's not as if it's down. The company did confirm, though, that it had uh, taken the site offline while updating the configuration of one of its software systems. The company says, nothing is more important to us than making sure Facebook is there when people need it. And we apologize to anybody who may have had trouble connecting last night. So whether or not you choose to accept Facebook's apology is completely up to you, but it seems like everything's okay now. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. We'll see you tomorrow. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.